Today, we check out Brizzy Pro and what the new beta version actually brings to the table. So if you're interested, stick around, because this is pretty cool. My name is Paul C and welcome to WP Touch, the channel where I show you how to create beautiful WordPress websites. If this is your first time on the channel, please consider subscribing and clicking the bell icon below to be notified every single time new content is uploaded. So Brizzy Pro, what is it? Well, it's the pro version of the Brizzy Visual Page Builder. It's the beta version is still very early in this life cycle, but it does have some really cool features. And today we're going to check out two of the main features and what they bring to the table. Now, Brizzy Pro is something I've been really looking forward to, so I can't wait to get my hands on this. So we'll kick this video off with the probably slightly less interesting aspect of Brizzy Pro, and that's the Role Manager. Now, the Role Manager is very, very simple. It just allows you to control who can access the Brizzy editor and who can't, and what kind of features they have access to. Now, to get to this, all we need to do is come up to Brizzy in the dashboard, Go into Role Manager, and once we're in there, you can see we have General, so you can activate Brizzy for Posts, Pages, and My Library. But we now have the Role Manager option, so we click on that tab. That'll take us through, and any levels we've got set up, as you can see at the moment, we've got the default editor, author, contributor, and subscriber. We can then go through and say whether they have full access, no access, or limited access. Now, limited access will allow them to do some basic features, but it won't allow them to really get in and start messing up your layout. So that's quite useful if you want to restrict, but still give access to some of those Brizzy features. Okay, so that's the role manager. Like I say, nothing too exciting, nothing you haven't already seen in many other page builders. So now that we've taken a look at the role manager in Brizzy Pro, let's take a look at the one feature that I really am quite excited about, and that's the ability to start using dynamic content. Now, still pretty basic at the moment, because like I say, this is a very early beta, but this should give you some idea of how easy it's going to be to implement dynamic content into your web design and your website templates. Now, when it comes to dynamic content in Brizzy, as the same with most other visual editors, you kind of have to have an understanding of what it's for. So if we break it down and say we want to create a layout structure for the key parts of our website, our WordPress website. So, for example, the archive to show our post listings and then the actual individual post page itself. We need to have a way of being able to style that and then globally apply that to the relevant different sections or to all of our posts and post archives. Well, this is where dynamic content comes in. In this video, I just want to demonstrate a very, very simple way that we can use some basics. Now, this is still early in development. We don't have support for things like advanced custom fields or pods or anything along those lines. So it's very, very basic, but it's also a really good and simple start. So let's just take a look at how we access it. All we're going to do is come down to Brizzy again on the left-hand side of a dashboard. We're going to come into templates this time. And for the templates, you can see we've got some simple option. It just says we can add a new template. Once we've created templates, we can then access those directly from this template section. So let's click on Add New. That's going to come through and give us a very, very basic editor. The first thing we can do is give this new template a name. So we're going to call this one Single Post Template. We know then exactly what it's actually relating to. Once we've named it, the next thing we can do is then go through and set the display conditions. Now, the display conditions, as its name suggests, tells the template when it needs to be used inside WordPress. So what we're going to say is we can use include and exclude. Very, very simple. We can then go through and specify what type of content needs to be used to trigger this template. And you can see we've got pages, posts, pages, media, categories, archives, and other sections. So pretty much everything that you need inside WordPress. Then we can go through and specify exactly what content is going to use if we want to get right down and be very granular. So we can apply different templates to different posts just by using these conditions. We're going to keep it much more simple than that. We're going to say posts and all. So all of our posts are going to use this new template that we create. Simply click add. That now applies our condition. If we want to create more complex conditions, we can go through then and add a second, third, fourth, and so on condition to make sure that our template is being used specifically where we want it to be. Okay, so once we've done that, final thing we can do is go in and choose what template we want to use. We're going to leave this to the default template so it pulls in currently the header and footer information that I've got inside the theme that I'm using, which in this instance is Ocean WP. But when Brizzy Pro kind of releases, or actually when Brizzy releases the updated version that allows us to create headers and footers, we can kind of bypass a big chunk of what the, the actual theme does. So for now, we have to use our theme structure. 
and click on publish so that'll save all that before we start using Brizzy. So I click on edit with Brizzy, that'll open up the typical Brizzy editor and present us with our starting section. So we can go through now and start building up the way that we want this to look. So when we create our templates, there are a couple of restrictions or limitations of what we can do currently with Brizzy Pro, but hopefully these are the things that will be integrated later on down the line when we get closer to that final release of Pro. Now one of those limitations is we can go through and use any of the templates that we want. So let's just say, for example, we want to come in and just use a header. So we'll say, oh, we actually quite like the look of this one. So we'll use that as the, the header. Let that download the background image and so on. Now I want to change that background image to use the image that I've got as my featured image inside my WordPress post. Currently, I can't do that. If I come up to the edit option and come in to choose the image, you can see we can close and delete the image. The only option we have is to upload an image, which currently is a little bit disappointing. But like I say, this is a pre-release beta version of it. So we'll leave that as is. However, we can come in and change the text. Let's just say we don't want this text on there. We want to put our own custom dynamic text. How do we access that? Currently, it's a little bit clunky. It's not the best implementation. And depending upon the region that you're in and what keyboard layers you have, you'll use a different kind of key. So if you look at the documentation, it says to use the hash key, which on a UK keyboard is diff in a different location to the hash key on a US keyboard. Now, to get past that, if you use the shift and three key, that will put in what should be the hash symbol. And in the UK, that basically means it's going to be a pound sign. So we put that in, and that then gives us this drop down list of options. Now this relates to the various different components we can pull in the dynamic information from a typical post. So you've got post title, content, excerpt, and so on. So for this example, we're gonna say we want to put the post title in. So we click on there, you can see that I replaced it with the placeholder text for the post title. So we can leave that as is. We could then come down if you want to and come in and start adding new block content. So let's just create a really, really simple, probably quite ugly looking post template and see how that works. So let's start by deleting the things that we don't need. So let's just take these away. We don't need the button. And we don't need the subhead in the space in there. That's fine. We can leave that as is for now. And we just close up some of this spacing just to make it a little bit neater. I say this is just me being somewhat OCD. Nothing more than that. Okay, let's just create the basic structure that we want now. So we're gonna to click to add a new block and we'll add a new blank block in there. Two columns is perfectly fine. We're gonna just squeeze this up a little bit and set to about a 30, 70 layout, something along those lines. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add in just an image on the left-hand side. So we're gonna to click to add an image and drag that in there. And we'll do the same then for text on the right-hand side. Now to set dynamic images, all we need to do is select the image Come and choose the image icon, the very first one. And on there, you'll see now where we have the normal upload option to upload our image. We now have this little disc icon on the right hand side. And if we click on that, that allows us to choose what dynamic content, what dynamic images we want to pull in. You can see we've got three options, featured image, site logo, and author profile. This one, we want to use featured image. We're gonna just click on that. Nothing actually happens on there, but we now know that's actually being used in the featured image. If we go to the text then what we're going to do is just going to delete this out of there and again we're going to use that supposed hash key or like i say on a uk keyboard is shift and three that will then bring up the options to go and choose what we want to pull in this time we're going to say we want to have the post content so that'll bring in the text content and again you can see it now replaces it with our simple placeholder text now what i'd like to see in a future iteration of this is the ability to use a post as a sample so we can see what the content is going to look like we can see then how we want to style things in a very similar fashion to what you can do with elemental pro and their template structure that will be very very useful and i'm sure this is something they will bring in in a future release hopefully before the pro version goes live so we've now created our post title we've dropped in our featured image post our content let's add a couple more elements in this let's just come in and say we want to add some more text in We'll drop that below our image and let's put in some information about the sections this actually comes from. So again, we'll just delete that from there, shift and three. And from there, we're gonna say we want to put in the post date. We'll put a separator in there. So we'll just put a dash. We'll then do the same again. So shift and three, and we'll say we want to put post time. And finally, we'll put the post author information in. So again, shift three and we'll come down and we'll say author name. So there we go. We've now put in some meta information. 
Now, you could go through and style everything now in the normal way that you would with Brizzy, but I'm finding that currently the way I've got things set up with this beta version, I can style things, but they don't actually reflect on the front end of the site. So this is one of those little bugs that I said about because this is a beta and something I would highly recommend not using on a live website. Use it to test things out just so you can get a feel for it, just so you can get an idea of how to use this in the future. Okay, so we've created our basic template. Let's update that now and just go and take a look at this in action. So we'll just click on update to make sure we save our changes. Once we've done that, we're just going to go in and take a look at the actual post itself. So we click on the little eye icon for preview. We can click on there. That'll open up a preview. And you can see there's the template we've just created displaying our new post using our custom post type. There's our title pulling our information in from our post. There's our post text itself, our body, our meta information, and our featured image. Now, you also notice that at the moment, this is one entire block of text. It's not picking up the styling from the actual paragraph structure. Again, one of those little quirks and bugs that I'm sure they'll iron out in the next pre-release version or the beta version of Pro, which will be 0.03, I believe. Hopefully, that'll be in the next week or two. Now, before I wrap this video, there's one more little thing that I want to show you that you can do for dynamic information inside Brizzy Pro. Let's just jump back into our single post template. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a dynamic link that will take us through to something like the authors page, which is quite a nice way of then linking through to all the other articles or posts by a particular author. Very easy to do. We're going to simply come down and highlight the little block of information, which in this case is the short code for our author name. Click on the link option. And you can see we have two options. We've got anchor and we've got URL. So let's click on URL. And again, we've got the little dynamic link icon on the right hand side of where we say to link to. Click on there and then we have all the options for the different kinds of links we can use. This example, we want to use the author URL. So we click on that. That'll create that dynamic link and we are pretty much done. So we just click on update on there. We now have a dynamic link that will take us through to the authors page with all the posts for that particular author. Now, this is just scratching the surface of what Brizzy Pro is going to allow us to do. But like I say, this is a beta version, so you've only got really quite limited functionality right now. But it's a great start. So this is a really good starting point for Brizzy Pro. I think the fact that in including dynamic content creation and template structures from the get-go is something that's going to really help to push them forward quite quickly. Now, if you want more information about Brizzy or Brizzy Pro, there's a link in the description below. And if you'd like to take advantage of the offer they currently have, which is lifetime limited access to Brizzy Pro when it's released, you can pre-order that at a special discount price. And that will get you a completely unlimited version of Pro that you can use on as many websites as you want once it's released. The link is in the description below. It is an affiliate link, so if you think you'd purchase it through that, it will give a small percentage back to the channel, but it doesn't cost you any more money. So check it out if it's something you're interested in. So that's pretty much what I wanted to cover. That's what I wanted to demonstrate to you in the beta version of Brizzy Pro. What you can see is it's a great starting point for adding dynamic content into websites. And if they keep on going down this route, I think they're gonna have a fantastic, really simple integration that really does set it apart from a lot of the other page builders out there. Well, what do you think of this Pro version? Do you think the beat is a really good start? What would you like to see in the next iteration of this and the kinds of things you'd like to see before Brizzy Pro is actually officially released? Leave your comments in the comment section below. And let's get our conversation started. As always, my name has been Paul C. And if you've enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up, smash that subscribe button and hit the bell icon to be notified every time new content is added. As always, until next time, take care.